The Crazy Face Baldo cartoon coming at you soon! Cartoons were something I always watched growing up, and most of them were family friendly and fun for all ages, but even though I didn't realize it, some of those cartoons that I watched, or for that matter that we all watched, were completely inappropriate by today's standards. Cartoons that may have made sense at the time, but if they were made today, would cause a huge uproar and controversy. Here are 10 cartoons that would be banned today. Number 10 is Blame It on Lisa. Everyone loves The Simpsons! <laughs> Blame It on Lisa was an episode of The Simpsons which caused so much controversy that its makers regretted even making it. In this episode, the Simpsons' daughter Lisa visits Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, and it's there that she hopes to find a Brazilian orphan named Ronaldo who she's been sponsoring. But in Brazil, the episode caused widespread offense. This is because it used a number of stereotypes often applied to Brazilian culture, and also included inaccurate elements from cultures outside of Brazil. It was the tourist board of Rio de Janeiro which took the most offense. In fact, it began proceedings to sue Fox Television for depicting the city as rife with crime and rat infested. The Simpsons creator James L. Brooks eventually issued a personal apology to the residents of Rio de Janeiro and now regrets ever making the episode. Number 9 is the Winston Flintstones commercial. Tobacco companies are now banned from advertising their products because they cause cancer and heart disease. But in 1971, before this ban was instituted in America, the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company not only sponsored the Flintstones, but actually made a mini episode advertising Winston cigarettes. Hey, Bonnie, I'm getting a pretty good buzz off this smoke. Why don't we give some to Wilma? Maybe the kids too, huh? Yeah, that wasn't even that much of a joke because in the episode or the short commercial, Fred and Wilmar are actually seen enjoying Winston cigarettes, proclaiming how great the brand is, and then quoting the company's slogan. It was only when the baby character Pebbles was added to the show that Winston cigarettes ceased their involvement with the series. Advertising how great cigarettes are on a children's program would never happen today, and it's amazing that it was ever done back then. Number 8 is Hair Ribbon. This cartoon was made in 1944 and right off the bat the year tells you that it was made in a different time. The episode featured an outing for Bugs Bunny, however, if that outing was made today it would play very differently. Hair Ribbon follows Bugs as he torments and is chased by a large dog with a Russian accent. Several gags ensue and at one point Bugs even dresses up as his arch nemesis Elmer Fudd. But in this case two endings were created for Hair Ribbon, both of which were far too too violent for children's television today. In one, Bugs Bunny fakes his own death. Oh Matt, that's terrible, really? Because tortured by guilt, the dog then shoots himself in the head. Yeah. Oh, but don't worry, the alternative ending involves Bugs Bunny pulling out a gun and shooting the dog in the mouth. I'm not kidding. While both endings were eventually banned, these were actually made. Look, I get that this cartoon was made during a world war, I get it, everything was very terrible, but oh my god! That's really all I have to say. Number seven is Song of the South. Song of the South was made in 1946 and is a mixture of live action and animation. The musical film was a hit at the time, but there's no way it would ever be made today. It's been described by one critic as one of Hollywood's most relentlessly offensive racist texts. Although the source material is technically set on a plantation in Georgia, just after the American Civil War, the film never makes the timing entirely clear. Much of the controversy stems from the depiction of African Americans happily working on a plantation when it's unclear to the audience that they're not slaves. Some critics believe that it's an attempt to avoid upsetting both segregationists and civil rights activists at the time, leading the film to its muddy message. Number 6 is Der Fuhrer's Face. 
Released in 1943, Der Fuhrer's Face was made by Walt Disney Productions and released by RKO Pictures. The purpose of the cartoon was to encourage Americans to buy war bonds to help fund the war effort. With America deep into the Second World War at the time, it's not surprising that Disney attempted to address elements of what was going on in the world. Now, while all of this was admirable, the film did depict Donald Duck as a Nazi? Even though he was reluctant in the cartoon to follow Hitler's orders, the depiction of one of Disney's most beloved cartoon characters wearing a swastika has often kept the short film out of circulation. If Disney were to make this film again, it's pretty clear that while the anti-fascist message would remain, they probably wouldn't dress up old Donald Duck in a Nazi uniform. I didn't ask for this! Number 5 is The Ren and Stimpy Show. Ren and Stimpy is an iconic cartoon series which aired on Nickelodeon from 1991 to 1995. While it was extremely popular, its gross out humor and twisted jokes kept it in hot water. The series followed a short tempered chihuahua named Ren and a three year old dim witted cat named Stimpy. They would get involved in off the wall adventures and often be at odds with each other. That's actually an understatement. They would go at each other like, Stimpy, you idiot! Throughout its run, Ren and Stimpy courted controversy by including sexual innuendo and other adult jokes in what was originally marketed as a children's show. Parents groups rallied against episodes which included, among other things, the burning of the United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights. I live in America right now and I've seen enough to tell you that that kind of stuff doesn't go over well. While the show has a large fan base today, it's doubtful that this cartoon would ever be made on a children's channel again. Number 4 is Censored Eleven. Believe it or not, even though they're children's cartoons, there are 11 censored Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies cartoons which have been completely banned and would never be made today. None of these episodes have actually ever been distributed publicly since 1968. The cartoons themselves were made between 1931 and 1944, as well as a 1951 reissue of the episode Goldilocks and the Jiven Bears. I'm not kidding. Each cartoon contains offensive material depicting racist stereotypes. Bizarrely, Warner Brothers announced in 2010 that they would be releasing a new uncut version of all 11 films on DVD the following year. It's 2018 and the DVD still has not been released and I think this whole idea is extremely offensive. No one uses DVDs anymore, why would they do that? Number 3 is Fritz the Cat. Robert Crumb's skewed depictions of women are controversial in the comic art world, but in 1972, a feature-length cartoon based on his work and called Fritz the Cat was released which shocked audiences then and now. Directed by Ralph Bakshi, who would go on to make the animated Lord of the Rings, Fritz the Cat follows the eponymous Fritz as he lives a life of excess in the 1960s in New York, making fun of everything from race relations to politics. Crumb was openly angry about the end result and accused Bakshi of right-wing propaganda and twisting his creation in disgusting ways. The split would make sure that such a film would never be made today. But hey, I guess it all turned out because Crumb was so furious that he killed Fritz the Cat with an ice pick in a later story. Yeah. Number 2 is Deadly Force. Deadly Force is an episode of one of my favorite TV shows as a kid, Gargoyles, and was considered so hard hitting that it's unlikely that something like it would ever be made again. Produced by Walt Disney Television, Gargoyles aired from 1994 until 1997 and followed the exploits of a group of gargoyles protecting New York City at night. I had the action figures, it was a good time. Despite being noted for its serious tone, many were shocked by the episode Deadly Force. In it, one of the gargoyles accidentally shoots Elisa, a police detective. The show explored the gun control debate and left Elisa motionless on the ground, covered in blood, just before going to a commercial break. Oh my god, I shot and killed this woman! Can't get enough of that sugar, Chris! While some praised the show for tackling gun violence, many felt it was too far for a children's show. As you could imagine, the episode was banned and was edited to remove the offending scenes. And number one is Tom and Jerry. 
Tom and Jerry are two of the most famous characters of any cartoon, but they certainly don't make them like they used to, and for good reason. In episodes from the 1930s until 1950s, Tom and Jerry included several racist stereotypes in their stories. But that's not all. Other episodes showed the characters smoking, and until fairly recently, the cartoon duo were known for their outrageous acts of violence on each other. Since then, many of these episodes have been re-edited and re-voiced to exclude the racist elements when broadcast. As for the violence, some feel that that was at the core of what made Tom and Jerry funny, and I kind of agree. After all, it's cartoon violence. As long as no one's getting shot and selling sugar crisp, it should be not taken seriously. Despite this, newer versions of Tom and Jerry either water down the violence or, and I can't believe I'm saying this, show them being friends. <laughs> Disgusting. And that's it! If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it in the future, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications for my new uploads. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!